Did you know you can use AI to completely change what your entire YouTube setup looks like? You can make it as crazy and as wild as you could possibly want, or you can just use it to add a few elements to what it is that you're doing. I'm gonna show you how to do it, and we're starting right now. Okay, so for this, you're going to need a couple of things. One, you're going to need a screenshot from the footage that you are going to manipulate. Pretty much every piece of video editing software has this where it allows you to export the frame. That's the option you wanna use. Next, once you have your image, you wanna to go to firefly.adobe.com. This is currently free while it's in beta. So depending on when you watch this video, it may or may not still be free, but at the time of publish, this is still free but you wanna drag your image into Adobe Firefly. So once your image is inside of Adobe Firefly, the very first thing I wanna show you is down here at the bottom, you can see where it has add or subtract. And then over here it has insert and remove. So what you can do here is I'm gonna make sure that I have insert selected and I wanna make sure that I have add selected because we're gonna be adding a window here. And all I have to do is just draw over in this area here and once I do that, you're gonna see the dialog box pop up down here at the bottom, and I'm gonna put in window with ocean view and click generate. Now, once it gives the image, one of the cool things is it gives you different options. So I can come down here and I can say, okay, well, let's try this. That's not really an ocean view. That actually looks okay. And then right here is another option as well. I actually like that. So I'm going to hit keep. Then I'm gonna come over to this side and I'm going to block out this whole area. I'm gonna make sure to be mindful of the desk. It's gonna recreate some of that, but I'm gonna make sure to be mindful of that while I'm erasing all of this. And then I'm going to put bookshelf. That looks a little ridiculous, so I'm gonna go through the options again. That also looks a little weird, but this looks okay. So this looks a little bit more realistic, so I'm gonna roll with that, but first I'm gonna check on this. Yeah, that one looks a little weird too. So I'm gonna go with this one here since it looks a lot more realistic. I'm gonna hit keep. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on remove because of this little overhang. I'm gonna come up here and I'm just going to remove that area and then hit remove. And then right out of the gate, it's perfect. So I don't have to do anything else there. So I'm gonna hit keep. Now I'm gonna change this back to insert and then I'm going to add a piece of art right here. Same thing, I'm gonna highlight that area and then I'm gonna describe the image as modern art. And then I'm gonna hit generate. And then I'm gonna go through the options. And I think that one looks okay, but I'm gonna have it give me more just to be on the safe side. That almost looks like an abstract Mandalorian, so I'm keeping it. But some things that I found out through my experimentation is when you leave in some objects that are the actual objects that you have in the room, it can help add to the realism. As soon as you start removing everything, then things do start looking a little bit artificial, but this definitely helps you know, bring everything together by having some of those items in here, depending on what it is. So I did the jungle thing, which looked pretty cool, but it looked a little bit hokey. And to be honest, I'm not sure if it's because I'm just used to what my set looks like, or if it is because it actually looked hokey. Now, when you go to download this, Adobe is going to put a watermark on it. You can see right here, this watermark is to let people know that it's generated by AI. So you're gonna wanna be mindful of that for the next step. So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna go back to your editing software and you want to import the image that you just exported. And then from there, drop it into your timeline. So you can see here, when I turn this off, all of those things go away. So this is the part that you have to be mindful about. You can see right here where it has the Adobe watermark on here. If you could also see in my demo that I wasn't moving around a lot. And the reason for that is for this next step that we're getting ready to do. But as you can see, the possibilities here are pretty insane. For example, if you're somebody that makes videos outdoors for music videos, or let's say you're vlogging, you can take this whole thing to an entirely different level as you can see right here. But anyway, let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, that was pretty cool, right? So once you have this in here, what you wanna do is you need to mask yourself out. So the editing software that I'm using currently makes this really easy to do. This is Adobe Premiere. But what I do is I go through and I mask myself out like this. And then in my case, I'm actually going to also mask out this Firefly logo. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I don't want that on my video, obviously. So I'm just gonna do a quick mask right here. And you don't have to be that detailed. You just have to make sure that when you move that you don't go outside of the bounds that you set. So I'm just gonna make some minor adjustments here to ensure that doesn't happen. And then I'm going to go over to my mask in Adobe Premiere and I'm gonna hit invert. 
Now I have everything in there. I don't have the logo on here either. And you can see when I hit play. Did you know you can now use AI to completely change what your YouTube setup looks like and make it look any way that you... Right, so I'm within the area that I cut out. So I could just stretch this out over that particular clip. Now, let me blow your mind. Now for this, even if you're not gonna use this specific tool, I just want you to see what you can do here. So in the event you need it in the future, that you know that you can lean on this for this. And the really awesome thing about this is this is all new. So this is just gonna continue to get better as we go along, but check this out. In Photoshop, I'm gonna make the canvas size bigger, just the canvas itself. So I'm gonna take this to 5,000, I'm gonna take this one to 3,000 just to give me enough room to work with, and I'm gonna hit okay. Now, after I expand this, the next thing that I'm going to do is delete all of this extra stuff here. Now, I'm going to use the wand tool. I'm gonna to select the background. I'm gonna to go to Generative Fill, and I'm just going to say Modern Office. Now, just like in Adobe Firefly, I have the option down here that I can choose between a few different options. So I think this looks pretty cool. Then I'm gonna click on Add to Mask, and I'm gonna go in here and just cover this line up. And this is going to ensure that all of my edges look nice and everything fits. And then from here, I'm just going to export this image the same way we did in Firefly. Now from there, one thing I don't like is this keyboard right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the select tool here and I'm going to just remove this whole area by typing remove, then hit generate. And then you can see it removed that part that I didn't like. And then from here, I just export and I export as a PNG just so that I can have the highest quality possible. And just like with Firefly, I'm just going to import the image, open it up a little bit to give me some space to work with. I'm gonna go into the masking tool, do the same exact thing that we did before. And then I'm gonna hit invert. Now all of that is there. And then when I hit play. AI to completely change what your YouTube setup looks like and make it look any way that you want to. I'm gonna show you how, and we're starting right now. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a pro tip here. This part is really important for really making everything go together in a fantastic way. So if you're using software and you're gonna do any type of like zooms or crop zooms or anything like that, what you wanna do is of course you wanna limit the size to the same size as the graphic that you're going to be using in terms of length and then any keyframe animations that you do. I'm gonna zoom this in, but you can see how it goes outside of that bounding box, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull this back. And then what I'm gonna do here inside of Premiere is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hit copy. And then I'm gonna click on the graphic that we added, the artificial stuff, and I'm gonna hit paste attributes. And then I'm gonna hit motion and then hit okay. So what happens is this adds a level of realism to it because the motion sells the whole thing. Another tip for you that I found while messing with this is if you also adjust the colors together, it can also make a really big impact of how everything looks and makes everything look a lot more realistic. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add an adjustment layer inside of Premiere. So I'm gonna make sure I'm clicked into the project area. Then I'm gonna go up to File and New, and then Adjustment Layer. This adjustment layer is going to match the settings of the video, and I'm gonna hit OK. And then I'm gonna take this adjustment layer and I'm going to drag this on top of the whole thing. Now with this adjustment layer, it makes the edit non-destructive in any way, and it's applying to everything that's underneath it. So now I can go in and I can adjust the white balance and it's gonna impact, as you can see right here, the entire thing. So I'm gonna adjust the white balance just a little bit. Um, let's say I'm gonna pull back a little bit of the contrast or maybe I'm gonna increase it. Yeah, in this case, we'll pull it back. I'm gonna brighten up the shadows and you can see how this impacts the entire thing. Then I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna add a vignette just something minor. I'm gonna go into creative, add a little bit of vibrance to it, maybe even sharpen it just a little bit to bring it all together. And for the sake of the demo here, I'm going to actually stretch this out over the whole clip for the motion, just so you can see how real this makes everything look. So we have that slow motion creep of everything zooming in right here. 
that just helps sell it as one piece and as a real scene. Now, if you're a content creator and you're wanting to learn even more ways to use AI to make your videos look better, to grow your YouTube channel, and to help you with your workflow, make sure you subscribe because there's a lot more videos like this on the way. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.